Chapter 6 By the end of supper, Joel had filled Derek in on the rules of Euchre. Listening to her cousin's convoluted explanation, Reyna exchanged excited glances with Haley. They were both certain they were going to win. Haley wasn't quite as competitive as the Quins were, but she was learning quickly to join their ways. After they had finished, the two women quickly loaded the dishwasher, while Joel went over a little bit more about how to play and the two men developed a strategy. Raina knew she and Haley wouldn't need one. Joel had never been good at euchre, and she was sure something miraculous hadn't happened since the last time they'd played. The four of them gathered around the table, the three animals still piled together in the corner, seeming to be content. When Derek bit a lone hand with the first deal and Raina looked down to see the right bower in her hand, she knew that there was no way Joel had explained anything well. They were going to kick their butts, and she was going to dance with glee. Maybe she'd even dance a little jig to commemorate St. Patrick's Day. By the end of the third hand, they were leading so badly, Joel threw his cards in. There's no point in even finishing this game. You girls won this round. Now let's play couples. Reyna was certain that with a better explanation of the rules, Joel would still be the weak player at the table. I need to take Daisy outside. Do you want to join me, Derek? Derek nodded, following her out. Daisy went on the way in. There's no way her bladder is that small, he said as soon as the door closed behind them. Yeah, I just wanted to really explain the game to you. Joel is horrible at euchre and always has been. He'll still be the lowest man on the totem pole. She gave a brief explanation of the game, explaining the bowers in a way that Joel had neglected or not understood himself. By the time she was finished, Derek was nodding. I get it now. Why did you let him teach me? I was so confused. I know. He's the worst. Now, let's go wipe the floor with them. Derek shook his head. You kind of scare me with your competitiveness. Good. That's how it should be. She walked back toward the door, noting that Daisy was waiting to go back in. All right, Daisy is happy, and so am I, deal, Joel. It only took two hands for Joel to realize her reason for going outside. You guys talked strategy. Raina shook her head. We didn't have to. I just explained the game to him in a way that made sense, and that was all he needed. I explained it well. Even Haley shook her head. You're a wonderful veterinarian, and I'm very excited to marry you. But you cannot explain euchre to save your life. By the end of the evening, Reyna and whoever partnered her had won every single game. There had been a couple of bad hands, because Haley had been dealt alone hands, but if Joel played, his team lost. When they were finished, Joel shook his head at Reyna. He didn't seem to be competitive toward the other two. Only Reyna. I'll beat you next time. Only if we play another game. Reyna said with a grin. Good luck at Grandma's tomorrow. Who knows what she's going to pick for the competition. No idea, but may the best Quinn win. Oh, we will. Reyna said with a grin. She hugged Haley. I had a lot of fun. Thanks for supper. We really need to do this again sometime. You're very welcome. And we do need to do it again, but maybe with a different game. Reyna laughed. I liked the way this game went. I'm sure you did. Haley shook her head. Good night. Good night. Reyna scooped up her dog and carried her to the door. Did you have fun with your friends? She received a lick on the cheek as her answer, and she considered that a yes. When they got out to Derek's truck, he started the vehicle and then looked over at her. Joel is absolutely terrible at that game. We need to choose something else next time we play with them. We can try, but knowing Joel, he won't be willing to switch games until he's won at least once. Then he'll declare himself the champion because he won the last game, and he'll insist on changing games. It is the way of things. 
Derek drove through the quiet streets of town to her parents' house. Was your mom up when you got home last night? Yeah. She's working on writing a book, so she stays up all night working, while the house is quiet. It makes my dad crazy. I think it's great she's writing a book. What's it called? Confessions of a Redneck Witch Doctor. He laughed. I think I really like your mother. I know I do. Did you have fun? She asked. She hoped she hadn't scared him off her with hyper-competitive ways. I did. You and Joel are kind of scary with how competitive you are with each other, but I guess the whole family is that way from what you've said. I'm a little nervous about tomorrow. Don't be. You'll be on my team. She grinned at him, leaning over and kissing his cheek. Thanks for a wonderful evening. I'll be here to get you in the morning, at quarter, till ten, right? She nodded. That's perfect. There will be a huge lunch and visiting with everyone, and then you'll get to see our competitiveness in action. You'll love it. I'm sure, he got out and walked her to the door, kissing her quickly. I'm afraid your mother is going to look out and see me kissing you. Oh, she might. Raina rolled her eyes. I have got to find a house. You said that last night. And the night before, too. She shook her head. The problem is, the houses I like are all out of my price range, and I don't want to settle. If I'm buying, I really want to buy the house I'll live in forever. Makes sense. But it makes dating a little hard. She stood on tiptoe and kissed him once more. I'll see you in the morning. I'll be here. Her mother was once again on the couch, typing away. Did you get a lot done tonight? Raina asked. April Lynn took her eyes from her laptop and rubbed the back of her neck. So much my hands hurt. I guess that's a good thing. Probably is, Raina said with a grin. I'm off to bed. Derek's going to pick me up for grandma's in the morning. He's been warned there will be a contest of some sort. I'm sure there will. Your grandmother never passes up an opportunity to pit all of us against each other. Wouldn't be a holiday without it. Nope. Raina kissed her mother's cheek. Go to bed soon. Don't stay up all night writing. I'll try not to, April Lynn said, her attention once more on her laptop. Asterisk. Derek truly enjoyed the lunch at the Quinn's ranch the next day, but after lunch, things got a little strange. Mrs. Gertrude Quinn, not to be confused with any other Mrs. Quinn at the party, handed out small cauldrons to everyone. This is an every-man-for-himself contest, she announced in a loud voice. Your task is to find as many pieces of chocolate gold as you can and fill your cauldron. You have precisely one hour. The winner will get the coveted leprechaun to live in their home for the next year. Derek glanced at Raina, wondering if the woman was serious. From the way she was clutching the handle of her cauldron, he guessed she was. All of the Quinn cousins seemed ready to run as soon as their grandmother announced it was time. Is she for real? He whispered to Raina. Raina gave him a look that made him wonder if he'd lost his mind even attending this party. Yes, she's very serious. And I'm taking home that leprechaun. Go! shouted the matriarch of the family, and everyone ran in every direction. Derek stood for a moment, wondering what on earth he was supposed to do. Haley looked at him with a shocked expression. I guess we look for gold? I guess so. Siren, the guy from the taco truck, was going at it as if he'd been born a Quinn. His wife, Roxy, was being a little more subdued, but he was sure that was because she was expecting and she didn't want to get trampled and possibly hurt the baby. It was definitely a worry with this crowd. After a minute or two, Derek figured that he should jump in and do whatever the others were doing. Why not? It was the way of the Quins, and if he was going to be in love with one of them, he needed to step up to the plate. He stepped outside to see people scrambling everywhere. 
There was still a significant amount of snow on the ground, but that wasn't stopping everyone from looking in outbuildings and around the outside of the house. He joined the frenzy, not sure why he wanted to win a silly leprechaun, but it suddenly was the most important thing in his world, and he'd given everyone else a head start. He was surprised the Quins weren't trampling children and animals as they hurried around, trying to find the little gold coins that had been hidden. He found his share, looking in places no one else had thought of. Under car tires, in drain pipes, and even under a decorative leprechaun on the front porch. When time was called, he hurried to the living room, where Mr. and Mrs. Quinn, the grandparents of Raina and her siblings, stood waiting to tally up the total amounts of candy found. They each kept count on a sheet of paper when they were handed the cauldrons to go through. He could see that young Claire, Haley's sister, had a red face and a full cauldron. She seemed to have the fullest. Maybe. He wasn't sure. He'd have to wait for the final count with everyone else. It took more than 30 minutes to tally everything up, and he found Raina standing there, looking excited. You did good. She told him, having spotted his full cauldron from across the room. It took me a few minutes to get into it, and then the frenzy hit me, and I had to beat everyone. Especially Joel. She laughed. That's how it starts. One little contest where you work to beat the whole family, and then you're one of us. A Quinn to the end, refusing to lose anything at all. Derek laughed. I have a feeling this is a one-time thing for me. I know better, Raina said with a huge grin on her face. Grandma Gertie put two fingers in her mouth and whistled loudly to get everyone's attention. The counting has been done. We have two prizes this year. The golden leprechaun for the winner with the most gold coins, and the leprechaun statue for the family with the most coins. Some of you have a distinct advantage, thanks to marriages, but I'm not taking that into account. She held up the golden leprechaun first. This goes to the person with the most coins. And that person is, Derek, Raina's date for the party. You'd better be joining the family soon, young man, because this leprechaun needs to be presented next St. Patrick's Day to be passed on to the next winner. Derek hurried forward and took the leprechaun, a hideous thing that looked as if it had once been green but had been spray-painted gold for the dubious purposes of the Quinn family. He held it high above his head. I didn't prepare an acceptance speech, but... I won. Raina laughed. When he joined her, she shook her head at him. I've created a monster. I'll let you touch my gold trophy if you're nice to me. She just rolled her eyes, waiting for the announcement of who won the other leprechaun. When it was announced that it was Harold and Irene's family taking it home, Raina forced herself to clap like a good sport. It was Claire that put them over the edge, she whispered to Derek, who just nodded. He couldn't figure out why he was annoyed that Bob's family didn't win, when it really didn't matter to him, but he was. Raina went to her father. We'll get them next year. Bob Ling will be back. Bob grinned. I hadn't thought of that. Bob Ling is going to be our ace in the hole. After the big competition, it seemed that the day was over. Everyone was hugging, saying goodbye, and taking their empty dishes. Derek looked over at Raina. Is it time to go? We need to stay for a few minutes with Grandma and Grandpa. They want to get to know you a little better. Derek didn't mind that, so he stayed. Mrs. Quinn pulled out some cookies and put them in the middle of the table. Coffee or milk? She asked Derek, automatically pouring milk for Raina. Milk, he said. He drank coffee at times, but not ever after noon. He found it made him wired, and he never slept if he drank it too late in the day. He sat at the kitchen table, beside Raina, and put a couple of cookies onto the plate Mrs. Quinn put in front of him. Thank you for the cookies and allowing me to be part of the festivities. He had to wonder if this family did this much for St. Patrick's Day, what Christmas could possibly be like. No problem. Mrs. Quinn put his milk in front of him, and then she settled next to her husband. 
What are your intentions toward our granddaughter? Derek's eyes widened. I just met her on Monday. And from what I heard, she had her hands on your bare body, just minutes later. What do you have to say for yourself? I, uh... Grandma. You're scaring him. Raina turned to Derek. She knows I gave you a massage, because you hurt your shoulder. She's just trying to freak you out and make you think you have to propose to me yesterday. She's being a pain. Harley grinned, biting into another cookie. Listen to her. She knows her grandmother. Grandma glared at her husband before turning back to Derek. You do have good intentions toward Raina, don't you? Yes, of course I do. At the moment, I'm just taking her out a couple of times a week and getting to know her better. But her hands have been on your naked body, and your lips have been on hers. In my day, that meant a marriage proposal. I, Derek had no idea how to respond to the woman. He wanted to propose to Raina, but it was way too soon. What kind of idiot proposed after knowing someone for only a week? I think I need to know her a little longer before I propose. You do, huh? Well, I think you marry a woman before you let her put her hands on your naked chest. Raina bit her lip. She couldn't control her laughter anymore. Grandma, stop scaring the poor man. He works for Joel, and he's probably afraid he's going to get fired if he doesn't ask me to marry him. Gertie Quinn took a bite of her cookie. She could see by the frightened look on Derek's face and the amused look on Raina's that her job was done. Would anyone like some more cookies? Once they finished with the cookies, Raina went to find Daisy. She had done really well with the family there, and after the first hour, Raina hadn't even felt like she needed to keep her hand on the dog's leash to make sure she was all right. She found her curled up with Jasper, which was a little surprising. Jasper had one foreleg thrown over the top of the dog as if he was hugging her. There you are, Daisy. She carefully extracted her dog and held her close. Is that the cat you told me about? he asked, staring at Jasper. Yup. Have you ever seen a fatter cat? He shook his head. I'm not sure it's healthy for him to be so big. He needs to start getting some exercise. He looked over at Mrs. Quinn. Are you feeding this cat lasagna? She laughed. His name is Jasper, not Garfield. I feed him cat food. And everything else under the sun, her husband said. Joel's been on her to feed him properly for years, but she doesn't listen. I don't think you're going to have him much longer if you don't start feeding him properly, Derek warned. She's hurt it all. Harley held out his hand to shake Derek's. Thanks for the advice. I'll do my best to keep her under control. As they left the house, Derek looked over at Raina. Your grandparents are scary people. Nah. Just grandma. She's a mess and a half. I can see that. Is she like that with all of the dates that come to these parties? Derek couldn't imagine that anyone would come twice if she was. But then he looked at Raina, and he knew he'd be back just as often as he was invited. Yup. But there haven't really been that many until the past few months, to be honest with you. There haven't? How many dates have you brought home for a party? One. Derek started the truck, then looked at Raina in surprise. But that would mean. Yeah, you're the only date I've ever brought to meet my grandparents. Feel special yet? Derek wasn't sure if he felt more special or scared. They might really expect him to propose immediately now. The family seemed just strange enough that he didn't know what to expect next. Chapter 7 Raina didn't go into work until later in the day on Mondays, and she dropped Daisy off at the hospital first. She didn't see Derek there, but Haley told her he was off in one of the treatment rooms with a patient. As long as it's not Sweetie. No, Sweetie's not on the schedule until this afternoon, Haley said, shaking her head. I keep telling Joel he should at least trade out with Derek on seeing that vicious beast. 
But he won't, because he thinks he did his time. Ugh. Raina sighed. I'm going to run off to work. Tell Derek I said hi. I will. When Raina got to work, she checked in with the receptionist of the spa first thing. Your first appointment is a guest of the hotel, Ella said. A Felicia Sanders. Raina nodded. Probably here for the hot springs. Is there anything in particular she wanted me to work on? She didn't say. All right. Is she ready? She is. Ella reached for the ringing phone while Raina hurried to deal with her massage client. The girl was sitting in the lobby. Hi, you must be Felicia. I'm Raina Quinn. I'll be your massage therapist today. If you'll come with me. Felicia followed her into the treatment room. As they walked, Raina asked the basic questions she asked everyone. Have you had a massage before? Dozens, Felicia told her. Oh, good, then this will be easier for us both. Do you have any bad spots you want me to concentrate on, or do you just need a relaxation massage? Just relaxation. You must be here for the hot springs, Raina said with a grin. They're amazing. If you're feeling adventurous while you're here, you should get a foot zone and maybe even a healing crystal treatment. My sisters do them both, and they are very good at what they do. Felicia wrinkled her nose. I'm not into all that hippy-dippy stuff. I'm really just here to see my fiancé. Oh, really? I've lived here my whole life and know just about everyone around town. What's his name? He's the new veterinarian in town. Derek Williams. I'm sure you don't know him. He's only been in town for a week. Raina felt her heart crash around her. Derek was engaged and hadn't even told her? What was wrong with the world? I see. You'll have to tell me all about him during your massage. She kept a smile on her face as she continued. Go ahead and get undressed and lie face down on the table. I'll be back in a few minutes. She left the room and stood staring off into space for a moment. Was it possible that Derek was engaged and playing with her emotions? Why would he do that? It didn't make sense to her. He seemed so straightforward, but then she'd heard stories about men doing that to women. She wished she knew what to do. She heard a text notification and pulled her phone from her pocket. It was from Derek. Heard you stopped by. Supper later? Miss you. She didn't bother to respond, stuffing her phone back into her pocket. Surely there was a logical explanation, but she couldn't think of what it could possibly be. She waited five minutes and knocked on the door, still feeling shell-shocked. This was going to be the longest fifty minutes of her life, trying to massage this woman. Are you ready? Yes. Raina went into the room, saying all the things she knew she was supposed to say. Let me know if my touch is too hard or too soft. We want the massage to be just what you need. All right. And then Felicia started chattering about her relationship with Derek. Raina wasn't sure how she managed not to dig her nails in and make the woman bleed. I was a freshman in college when he was a senior. I had some trouble with zoology, so he tutored me. I'm sure I'm not the first girl in the world to fall in love with her tutor. She gave a tinkling little laugh that made Raina want to vomit. He sounds like a good guy. He's absolutely amazing. We dated that whole year, and he went on to veterinary school, but he stayed at the same college. So we kept seeing each other. I graduated in May, but my parents live in Boise, so we were still able to be around each other all the time. I'm here to surprise him. That's so sweet. When's the wedding? We haven't set a date yet. That's part of the reason I'm here. I'm going to make him agree on an actual wedding date. Are you hoping for soon? Oh, no. I have a whole wedding to plan first. I would say two years out would be good for both of us. 
That'll give him time to get the whole veterinarian thing out of his system and give me time to plan the social event of the year. Reina blinked a couple of times. Social event of the year? And he's not going to stay a veterinarian? Derek loved what he did, and she knew Joel was planning on him sticking around, not taking off in a couple of years. Well, my daddy is going to offer him a job as vice president of his company when we marry. So you know he'll do that instead of playing with animals. I mean, I know he loves dogs, but why would he give up a life of leisure and high society to do it? I see. Were they even talking about the same man? Of course, they had to be, because how many Derek Williams could be vets there in Quinn Valley, but, the man she described sounded nothing like the Derek she knew. So you're spending today pampering yourself, and then you'll go see him? That's the idea. I'll get my massage, and I have a facial scheduled, and then I'll call him for dinner. I know I'll be on my own for lunch tomorrow. Where's a good place to eat in town? I'd recommend the taco truck. It's parked just next to the hotel parking lot, and it's absolutely amazing. My brother-in-law runs it, and if you like tacos, there's nothing better in all of Idaho. Felicia laughed. Are you really suggesting I eat food prepared in a truck? I don't think so. I'll get a good recommendation from some of the hotel staff. Raina really wanted to hurt the woman. Never in her life had she massaged someone she wanted to do bodily harm to before. It was bad enough the way she was talking about Derek, but to disparage Siren's taco truck? Really? You do that. Oh, I hope I didn't offend you. I just meant that people of my station in life really don't eat food, prepared in vehicles. I see. Raina shook her head. There was no way she could see Derek with this woman, but, maybe he wanted the money. There was no way for her to know what was going on really. When the massage was over, Felicia handed Raina a $100 bill as a tip. Buy yourself a real lunch and nothing else from that taco truck. Raina smiled sweetly. I'll do that. She had to wonder how many of Siren's tacos she could buy with a hundred dollars. Felicia smiled. I'm sure I'll be in town a lot, because I'll need to come and visit my Derek. I'll make sure I get a massage from you every time. For a small-town massage therapist, you're really not terrible at what you do. Raina didn't bother to respond. The woman was a witch with a capital B UG. She went to the receptionist's desk about her next appointment, trying to block all of the venom from Felicia's words from her mind. Ella was on the phone, so she pulled hers out of her pocket and responded to Derek's text. I'd love to. When do you want to pick me up? She'd ask him all about Felicia at dinner, and she would figure out what on earth was going on. When she walked into her next massage, she had a smile on her face, because she refused to let herself be affected by Felicia. No, she was going to have a good day, despite the other girl. When she walked in, it was her mother waiting for her. You hurt yourself? My hands and forearms are sore from typing again. Fix them, would you? Raina laughed. Of course I will. Maybe you should figure out how to dictate your book. It would be easier on your body than trying to type it. Yes, but there's something lost in dictation. The magic doesn't happen when I speak the words. Only when I type them. All right, Mom. But you know how these massages hurt. April Lynn sighed. I'll take ten minutes of pain over an hour of pain any day. Do your worst, baby girl. Raina laughed. Don't think I won't. You're mine for the next hour. For a moment, she considered telling her mother about her last massage and what Felicia had said, but if it was all a misunderstanding, and she had to hold out hope it was, she didn't want her mother to have lingering bad feelings for Derek. By the time she was out of her massage, she had another text, and she read it quickly. I'll pick you up at six. She didn't get off until five, so she'd barely have enough time to change, but that was fine. She'd wear jeans and be just fine. After work, she checked her texts one more time, 
and there was another message from Derek. Something came up. Can't make it tonight. Rain check? Her heart fell into her stomach. He couldn't make it, and she knew why. She drove to the hospital and picked up Daisy, not lingering to see him or ask anyone any questions. She felt like she was receiving pitying looks from all of the people that were still there, but she knew it might be her imagination. Daisy was excited to see her and sat calmly while she hooked her leash to her harness. Then she hurried to the car, wanting to get home as fast as possible. How she was going to hide how she was feeling from her parents, she didn't know, but at least she hadn't told them she had a date. Raina decided to cook when she got home, because her mother was already ensconced on the couch with her laptop, and she was pretty sure it was the only way she and her dad would be able to eat. She made a quick meal, being careful with the sodium intake for her dad's heart. While they ate, she said very little, and finally her mother frowned at her. What's wrong with you? Are you sick? Raina shrugged. Just tired. I'm going to take a long hot bath and disappear into bed with a romance novel. Her dad took her at her word, but her mother still looked skeptical. Did something happen with Derek? I haven't seen him today, Raina said honestly. How could something have happened? After her bath, she got into bed with her book and her dog. Daisy snuggled especially close to her, seeming to be trying to make her feel better. At least someone loves me and will be loyal forever. I'm glad to have you, Daisy. She fell asleep early and disappeared into a deep, dreamless sleep. Asterisk. Tuesday was errand day for Raina, so she put the dog into the car, and the two of them ran to Lewiston for some shopping. She played the music as loudly as she could get away with, and she got a couple of things she could have just as easily gotten at the store there in Quinn Valley. She just needed to be away. She took Daisy to a park at lunchtime, and she ate while the dog sniffed around at her feet, hurrying back any time a stranger came close. The snow was mostly melted after a warmer-than-usual week, and the park was beautiful. It was just what Raina needed to feel a little better about herself and her life. Just as she was about to get in her car, she got a text from Derek. Can you do dinner tomorrow night? For a moment, but only a brief moment, Raina considered going out with him, but she just couldn't make herself do it. She wanted to hear what he had to say, but she also didn't want to come face to face with him. Not yet. She needed time to distance herself. She'd already been falling in love with the man, and her heart felt like it had been shredded to pieces. Instead of responding, she ignored the text. She wasn't sure how she could put everything she wanted to say into just a few lines, so she'd say nothing instead. When she got home, she made supper for the family again. Right before supper, her sister Renee and her new husband, Chad, stopped by. Renee had a few bruises on her face, but Raina knew her sister hadn't been beaten by her husband, a conclusion she'd have come to with anyone else. No, her sister was the world's biggest klutz. She'd probably fallen and broken her fall with her face. Knowing her sister didn't like for anyone to mention when she was clumsy, she ignored it. What's going on with you two? She asked. Rene grinned over at Chad, their hands grasped together. All at once, Raina knew. You're pregnant. Rene frowned at her sister. You stole my thunder. Sorry, it was just written all over your face. I would have had to be blind not to know. I should have let you say it, though. Are mom and dad home yet? Renee asked. Nope. I'm expecting them any minute. I cooked enough for extras. Do you guys want to eat with us? You can tell them your news over supper. Renee and Chad both nodded. Sounds good to me, Chad said. Her morning sickness is all-day sickness, and she isn't exactly cooking any gourmet meals at the moment. Like I ever cook gourmet meals, Renee said, looking at Chad as if he'd lost his mind. I can't wait to tell mom. She's all excited about being a grandma, and now she'll be one two times over in a few months. 
Reina shook her head. She's going to be walking on air. I don't know that she's going to be able to get anything done. What about you? Rene asked. Are you excited for us? Of course, I am. So excited. I can't wait to hold my little niece or nephew. Their parents came in then. April Lynn looked at Rene. Thought I saw your car. Yup, that was ours. Raina said she made enough supper for all of us, so we're staying to eat. April Lynn shrugged. You know you're always welcome as long as I'm not the one cooking. Raina exchanged a look with Renee. They both knew how much their mother detested cooking. It's nothing fancy, Raina said. Just a low-sodium chili I found a recipe for. Thought Dad might like it. I'm sure I will, Bob said, taking his seat at the table. Chili sounds amazing. But I think tomorrow we need tacos. Does that mean you want us to invite Siren over, or you want to stop at the taco truck on the way home? April Lynn asked. They all knew Bob no longer ate inferior tacos. We'll stop at the truck on the way home. Raina nodded, getting up to serve everyone. I'm going to have to get Daisy from the hospital on the way home, so get me my tacos and get Daisy one for her. Daisy was frolicking under the table, pouncing on people's feet. Renee peeked under the table at her. I think she's more cat than dog. Nah, she's all dog, Raina said with a smile. Isn't she a sweetheart? Definitely. Renee picked her up and held her, the dog snuggling into her belly. You chose a good one. She chose me, Raina responded. They were about halfway through the meal when April Lynn looked at Renee. Not that I'm complaining, but you two don't just drop by in the evenings. Wanna tell me what you're doing here? Renee reached for her purse and pulled out a small piece of paper, handing it to her mother. I wanted to show you this. April Lynn took one look at the sonogram photo and started squealing. Two grandbabies. I'm going to have two grandbabies. Renee laughed, resting her head on Chad's shoulder. You're going to have lots of grandbabies, I think. Apparently, I am. April Lynn handed the paper to Bob. Look, Bob. Grandbaby number two. They're all going to get here at once, and this house is going to look like a tornado carried in a toy store. He shook his head. I'm just waiting for her to tell us we need to move to a bigger house, so each grandchild will have its own room when it visits. Raina bit her lip. She knew her dad was absolutely right. Her mother did love those grandbabies of hers, and they weren't even born yet. Just so I move out first. Give me time, Mom. They all laughed, but no one really thought it was a joke. After supper, Raina did the dishes while Renee and their mom talked babies nonstop. Names were tossed around, and plans for a baby shower were made. Raina tried to just be happy for her sister and not think about where her own life was headed. She'd thought she'd found her soulmate in Derek, but he was obviously not the man she'd thought he was. When she sat down with the others, she got another text from him. Did you get my text earlier? Dinner tomorrow? Instead of responding, she silenced her phone. She wasn't having dinner with him. Not until she knew what was going on. Chapter 8 Raina wasn't altogether surprised to see Derek waiting for her when she got to the hospital to drop Daisy off the next morning. She went to walk past him, but he caught her arm. Are you mad that I cancelled dinner on Monday? Raina shook her head. No, but I am in a hurry. I need to get to work. He frowned, walking alongside her as she took Daisy to the back of the clinic, where they were watching her every day. Dinner tonight. I think we need to talk. She shook her head. No thank you. She wasn't ready to spend time alone with him. Please, Reina. Give me a chance to explain everything. Finally, she nodded. All right. Dinner tonight. As soon as she got to work, she saw Felicia sitting in the spa waiting room. 
she did not want to be the one to work on her again. She wasn't sure what she'd do. Instead of talking to Felicia, Reina went to the receptionist's desk to talk to Ella. What's she doing here? She wants to see Riley. She's certain she'll give her a crystal treatment that will bring the love back to her or some such nonsense. Ella rolled her eyes. People tended to think Riley did a whole lot of strange things. Is Riley in? She's hiding in the back, trying to figure out what to say to her. Have her meet me in my massage room for a minute. Do I have anyone waiting? Raina asked, keeping her voice as soft as she could. No. You have an hour off before your first massage today. I was hoping you'd work on me for a few. My neck is killing me. Sure. Let me spend a minute with Riley, and then I'll work on you for the rest of the hour. Raina knew that the phones would just be put onto voicemail and all would be good. They'd done it before when Ella was out sick. Raina went into her treatment room and paced until the door opened and her sister Riley came in. Be careful with your next client. She's looking for some sort of love potion. Riley shook her head, laughing. So? It's not like I have anything like that. I do legitimate crystal healing, not the hooey stuff. She's not the nicest person. I worked on her Monday morning. I wouldn't be surprised if she threw a fit if you didn't give her what she wanted. Riley rolled her eyes. I'll soak a rose quartz in water and give it to her. They're cheap, and I don't really care. She eyed her sister. How's your love life? Derek seems really nice. Raina hadn't opened up to anyone about what she'd discovered when Felicia came to town, but she did then. She wanted her sister to have the whole story. Can you keep a secret? I've been your secret keeper for as long as I could walk. What's going on? Raina took a deep breath and explained everything the other woman had told her during her massage. Derek canceled dinner with me Monday night, and I'm sure he went out with her. I hope he wasn't dating me while he was still engaged to her, but I haven't really seen him since. I promised to go to dinner with him tonight. Ugh. Let me see if I can find a crystal to make her nicer to put in her rose quartz water. Maybe I'll throw in some amethyst. Riley shook her head. I'll find some pointy stones to put on her and deliberately stab her with them. Raina laughed. I appreciate you sticking up for me, but I don't think ruining the spa's reputation will help much. Just give her the session she asks for and move on with your life. Just wanted you to know what you were dealing with. She put a sheet on her massage table and turned on the warmer. And I promised Ella I'd spend the rest of the hour on her neck. All right. I know where I'm not wanted. Before leaving the room, Riley hugged her sister. I love you, but I wouldn't admit it if you told someone. Love you, too. Almost as much as I hate you. Anyone listening would think they were insane but they had the love-hate relationship of most siblings. They both grinned at each other as Riley left. Ella was there a minute later. Hurry and undress. I'll give you a minute. Face down. Raina wasn't going to go through all the pleasantries with Ella. She knew the routine. All right. Raina stepped out and stood outside her door, watching as Riley walked past with Felicia. Have you ever had a crystal healing session before? She heard Riley ask. No, I'm not usually into the hippy-dippy stuff, but I'm going to give this a try. Raina took a deep breath and promised herself that she was a nice person, and she wasn't going to go after her sister and Felicia and throw crystals at the latter. But the image of doing it did bring a smile to her face. For lunch, Ella brought tacos for everyone. She didn't have to pay for her massages, so instead, she always bought tacos for lunch. It satisfied them all. Felicia followed Riley out of the treatment room, a jar in her hand that looked like it contained a rose quartz and an amethyst. She stopped at the front desk to pay as Ella was doling out tacos. April Lynn even came out of her office. Siren is a godsend to this town. 
How did we eat before he arrived? She asked, taking the two tacos that were offered to her. Reina took hers. I love taco truck tacos. Felicia wrinkled her nose. I hope none of you die from food poisoning. I cannot imagine eating anything that was cooked in a vehicle. She gave a delicate little shudder. Riley reached around Felicia for her tacos. Well, I can't imagine not eating one of the most delicious tacos in the entire world. She opened the wrapper and chomped into her taco right there in front of Felicia. Raina grinned when Renee hurried out of her zone she'd just finished. Do I smell tacos? I think baby needs tacos. She grabbed her too and smiled at Ella. Thank you for treating us today. No problem. I told Siren they were for you guys, so I got the family discount. Raina frowned. Wait, there's a family discount? After Felicia had paid and left, they all enjoyed their food, glad she was gone. I need a zone tomorrow, Raina said to Renee. Have time in your schedule? Sure do. If you have time for a massage. They both looked at Ella, who tapped on her computer. Okay, you're on each other's schedules. Good thing we're light on guests at the moment. Roxy stepped off the elevator and walked over to them. She held up her bag of tacos. I saw Ella coming from the taco truck, so I thought we'd have a family lunch. Sounds good to me. Raina grinned at her sister and her mound of belly sticking out in front of her. How are you feeling? Fabulous. The morning sickness is gone, and other than an absurd craving for tacos and an inability to tie my shoes, I feel good. Even though Reyna was still tied up in knots over the Derek situation, she was thrilled to have time to spend with her sisters and mother. It just made everything better. Asterisk. Derek spent the day at the clinic, worried over how dinner would go. When he'd gotten the call from Felicia that she was in town to plan their wedding, he'd almost gone ballistic. He'd had to cancel dinner with Reyna, who he wanted to see, to spend time with the crazy woman who thought she was marrying him. He couldn't believe the situations she'd put him in since he'd first tutored her years before. He spent a little time with Daisy between patients, rehearsing exactly what he was going to tell Reyna at dinner. When Joel walked in and heard him having a strange conversation with the dog, he'd turned around and left him alone, obviously not willing to discuss anything normal with him. When Reyna came in at the end of the day to get her dog, he frowned at her. I thought we could drive into Riston for supper. Something casual. She nodded but said nothing else, and he didn't blame her. He knew she knew about the situation, but he had no idea how. Probably because Felicia had come into town flashing her daddy's money and talking about how they were getting married. He'd set her straight, again, but he was a little worried that she had completely ruined his chances with Reyna, someone he really did care for. He shook his head, going home to change. Neither of them really needed to go to dinner in their scrubs. Especially his, because he had blood on them from a spaying he'd done earlier in the day. He looked like he had just been on a killing spree. When he got to the Quince house to pick up Raina, he couldn't help but wonder what her parents knew about the situation. Would her father meet him at the door with a gun? He'd been in Idaho long enough to know it wasn't out of the realm of possibilities. Instead, Raina met him at the door, as if nothing was wrong. Her father called out to him from the kitchen, obviously knowing nothing. April Lynn called to him from the couch to have fun, typing furiously on her laptop even while she spoke to him. He'd always admired people who could type and talk at the same time. If he tried it, he'd be typing whatever he was saying. He walked her out to his truck, wondering how to start the conversation they needed to have. He wanted her to trust him, but how could she if he didn't tell her what was happening? Once they were in the truck, he pulled out and started driving toward Riston. There was an Italian restaurant there that he'd heard was really good. It might be just what they needed to get out of the little town. As soon as they were on the two-lane highway headed for Riston, he started talking, trying to explain. Have you ever heard of a man stalking a woman? 
I live in a small town, not the Middle Ages. Reina wasn't going to make this conversation easy for him. She was too annoyed. He frowned, but continued. Well, when I was a senior in college, I tutored science. Mainly just zoology, because it was my thing, and I was good at it. I got this freshman student, who seemed perfectly normal. She asked me out a couple of times, but there was something about her that made me feel like I should stay away. So I did. Felicia, right? She asked. The story was somewhat similar to what Felicia had told her, but definitely from a different point of view. Yes. She brought her parents to one of our tutoring sessions and introduced me as the person that she would someday marry. He shook his head. I explained that we had never even gone out, but they were looking at me like they believed her. It was so strange. That's bizarre. His story was hard to believe, but there were some odd ducks out there. It really was. Anyway, I went to the same university for veterinary school, and she was there all the time. Somehow she'd get my class schedule and wait outside my classes, following me to lunch. He rubbed the back of his neck with one hand, his other still on the steering wheel. I kept telling her that I wasn't interested in her. I thought about a restraining order, but I didn't feel like she'd done anything evil enough for that. Reina reached over and gripped his arm, hoping that he understood she was trying to be supportive. That's so hard. Finally, she followed me home and started showing up at my apartment. My dog was killed. I had no proof it was her, but its neck was slit. She's truly crazy, and I didn't know what to do. Anytime I talked to a girl, the girl would end up refusing to even look at me. Someone finally told me that if I was seen talking to someone, she would then go see them and threaten them. The threats led me to get a restraining order. It didn't really seem to matter. It kept happening, and she'd disappear before I called the police. That's really insane. When I graduated, I thought I was leaving her behind forever, but Joel put my name on his website as the second doctor in his practice. It's my fault. I didn't tell him not to. He shook his head. When I cancelled on you on Monday night, it was because she had called me and told me she was here to plan the wedding. I knew I needed to sit her down and talk to her and tell her that I was seeing someone else. I didn't tell her who. Don't worry about that. But I told her there was someone here and I wanted her to go home. What did she say? She cried. It's always her answer after I have those talks with her, and I've had a lot of those talks with her. She asked for your name, but I knew better. Anyway, we parted ways last night, and I hope she left town this morning. She didn't. Raina hated to be the one to tell him, but she didn't know how else to handle it. She went to my sister Riley, who specializes in crystal healing. She asked for an elixir that would make a man fall in love with her. Of course she did. What did Riley do? I told Riley everything I knew before she saw her. It wasn't much, but it was enough to know she was up to no good. She put two crystals in a jar of water for her and gave her that. Riley doesn't deal with mumbo-jumbo. She basically does a relaxation session that crystals are a part of. Raina wasn't sure the right way to describe exactly what Riley did but it certainly wasn't anything to do with making elixirs out of crystals to make a man fall in love. Oh, brother. Well, she probably now thinks she has to get me to drink her rock water, so I'll fall in love. He sighed. I'll call her parents in the morning and suggest someone comes to fetch her and take her home. She's been hospitalized for delusional thinking a few times in her life. I know because I sat and talked to her mother after my dog was killed. She said she'd try to keep a tighter rein on her, but it never worked. Are you in danger? Raina finally asked. She had no idea how far the crazy girl would go to prove her love for him. I don't think so. You're in more danger than I am, to be really honest with you. She's probably been asking around town about who I'm seeing and she'll be targeting you soon. 
He shook his head as he pulled into the parking lot of the Italian restaurant. Do you mind if I call her parents before we go in? I really don't know what to do, and I don't want you to be in danger because we're dating. I think that's a good idea. She waited quietly while he had a long discussion with whoever answered the phone. She's staying at the Quinn Hotel and Spa in Quinn Valley. It's a small town not far from Post Falls. Yes, I'll be careful. He ended the call and looked at her. So she seriously believes we're getting married. She had convinced her mother again, and now her mom is frantic. They're going to come and get her and see if they can get her back into a mental hospital. Do you have any idea why she focused all this attention on you? She felt badly for not talking to him before she believed Felicia. Never in her life had she dreamed it was a situation like this. None at all. I just helped her pass zoology. It was my job, and she paid me for it. That was it. I stopped private tutoring after that because of how much she freaked me out. I did some group tutoring for a little while for the biology lab on campus, but she showed up every time I was working, and I stopped going to work. I found a job as a bartender instead. It seemed safer. It would be safer. Wow. I'm so sorry she's put you through all that. She came to me for a massage on Monday, and she told me she was here to plan her wedding. I have to say I believed her. She's extremely convincing. Oh, I know. She's convinced everyone she's ever talked to that we were in love. I never even took her out on a date, and half of Idaho thinks I'm marrying her. If the situation were reversed and I was a girl and she was a guy, people would be all freaked out over it and doing something. With me being a guy, it doesn't seem as threatening. It's crazy. Very. She scooted across the seat and kissed his cheek. I'm not scared, though. I wish I wasn't scared for you. He put his arm around her and hugged her close. We can't be seen together again until she leaves town. That's why I wanted to come to Riston tonight. I thought it would be safer for you. Let's go eat. I refuse to let her ruin my evening out in the big city. He laughed at her reference to Riston as a big city. Well, then let's go eat. Chapter 9 Walking into the restaurant, Derek held the door, and he and Raina waited together for a table. Once they were seated off in a corner of the restaurant and their drink orders were taken, he took her hand in his. Are you freaked out? She shook her head. Well, maybe a little. Why didn't you tell me all this was going on before? Because I was really hoping it was all in the past. I kind of thought that by not talking to her, she wouldn't show up here. I guess I was wrong. I guess so. I wish I had answers for you. I wish I had answers for both of us. I don't want you going anywhere alone until we know she's gone. Ride to work with your mom or with your dad. I'll leave work and drive you myself if I have to. Don't accept any more massage appointments with her. Tell your parents what's going on and make sure she doesn't go into the spa at all. I'll let mom know as soon as I get home. Dad, too, if he's still up. I know mom will be because she's determined to finish her book this month. That's great. He grinned at her. I think your mom writing a book is absolutely amazing. It's neat that she's so interested in things like that at her age. She chuckled. Don't put it like that to mom or she'll be horribly offended. I can see that. Their drinks arrived then, and they gave their orders. As soon as the waitress left, a familiar face stood next to the table. The fairies told me I'd find you here. Hi, Jacqueline. Raina couldn't help but grin at the older woman. She'd known her for her entire life. She lived in a small house on Rivers End Ranch property, and it was entirely overrun with bunny rabbits. Jacqueline was a crazy bunny lady who talked to fairies and fought with her own garden gnomes. How are you enjoying married life? Married life is good. Simon's back there somewhere, 
Jacqueline said, pointing behind her with her thumb. So, you two are meant to be together, according to the fairies. She pulled up a chair and sat down at their table with them. There's someone trying to stand in your way, though. She's not dangerous, even if she seems like she might be. She is crazy, though. Raina had been told for years about how random people were approached by Jacqueline with messages from the fairies regarding their love lives. This was the first time she'd seen it firsthand, though. What do the fairies think we should do? She could feel Derek's skeptical gaze on her, but she didn't care. She felt like she'd been waiting for this moment her entire life. The fairies think you should be cautious and lock that crazy woman up and throw away the key. Trust him, because he's a good guy, and stop freaking out when random strangers tell you lies about him. You hear me? Raina nodded. Yes, ma'am. Good girl. Jacqueline looked at Derek. And you start telling her everything she needs to know. No more hiding crazy girls who think they're going to marry you. Got it? He nodded, slowly. Derek had no idea who this woman was or why she was interrupting their meal. Or how she knew so much about them. I'll do my best. Good, because you two should be ready to marry any day now. Just hop to it. Jacqueline stood up, removed her chair, and went back to her table with her new husband, Simon. Derek looked at Raina as if something traumatic had just happened. Who was that woman? Raina grinned. That's Jacqueline. She lives at River's End Ranch, and she is kind of a matchmaker. She keeps saying the fairies talk to her, and she fights with her garden gnomes, and... Oh, I'm making her sound crazy, but she's really amazing. I've been hoping she would try to match me up my whole life, and it just happened. But we've already matched ourselves up, haven't we? Well, sure, but now we have the fairy stamp of approval. And do you believe in fairies? Of course not. But I believe in Jacqueline. That's something completely different. I guess it is. It's also a bit strange. Raina shrugged, grinning. You didn't grow up hearing stories about how she approaches couples, gives them advice from the fairies, and then wanders off again as if nothing just happened. This is the day I've waited so long for. Derek wondered for a moment if maybe she wasn't just as crazy as Felicia, but he didn't say anything. As long as she never hurts people, I guess I'm good with it. I'm glad. Their food arrived then, and Reina went to work on her chicken fettuccine Alfredo. The food's good, he said quietly. I wasn't sure what it would be like in a small town like this, but it's definitely worth the drive. Yeah, I know. Just like the pub in Quinn Valley is worth the drive. If you're ever over this way during the day, there's a diner on the ranch called Kelsey's Cave. It's really good, too. Do you ever wonder what it's like to live somewhere where you don't know everyone and everything they do? He asked. Nope. I'm so happy right here in my little world. I want your, I can't call her your ex-girlfriend, your deranged stalker to leave, but other than that, I wouldn't change anything about it. Except maybe my living arrangements. I'm going to find a house to buy if it kills me. Have you even been looking? I guess that would help, wouldn't it? She winked at him. Yeah, I have a real estate agent who knows exactly what I'm looking for, and she is getting in touch with me on a pretty regular basis. The thing is, she calls and says, the Ross house is for sale and I don't need to go look at it, because I've been in it a bazillion times. It's like that with just about every house in town. I can't even imagine. Where did you grow up? she asked. It doesn't seem like you belong in small town Idaho, though I'm happy you're here. I grew up in Montana. On a ranch. But, it didn't have the same feel as Quinn Valley. I don't know why. The community was small but it wasn't like everyone was looking out for me when I left the house. It felt more like they were spying on me. And I've lived in Boise near my deranged stalker for the last several years. She laughed. 
Welcome to my little corner of the world, where everyone loves everyone else. Quinn Valley really is an amazing place to live and not just because it's named after my family. He smiled. I do like my job, and I like what I've seen of it so far. He paused for a moment, looking at his water glass. Maybe the problem with your house search is that you should be looking for a house with me, not without me. I don't think that's it. I do. But we'll talk about that after we get rid of Felicia. I wonder how long it's going to take her parents to get here and drag her back to Boise. She should probably be hospitalized again. I'm not sure if she ever should be out on the streets. And I know she shouldn't be unmedicated. Derek took a drink of his water. I feel bad even saying things like that, because I know she truly does need mental health intervention, but she's messed up my life too many times. You can say anything you need to say about her to me. I can. Yup. I promise. I'm not going to judge you in any way. He smiled at her, gripping her hand tightly. You're a pretty special girl, you know that? She shrugged. I try. Their drive home was spent talking about how she was going to stay safe in their current situation. Do you want me to come in and talk to your mom with you? He asked as he pulled into the driveway. Yeah, I think it would seem less crazy if you were there. She grabbed the front of his shirt and pulled him to her, kissing him quickly. I had to do that first, though. He laughed. Works for me. Feel free to grab me and kiss me anytime you want. Let's go get this over with, and we'll be able to move on. I'm not looking forward to admitting to your mom that I brought a psycho, who will soon be focused on you, to her little town. Don't worry about it. We have a plan, and if we stick to it, I'm sure everything is going to be just fine. Raina wasn't even worried about herself. She was worried about him. When they went into the house, she was surprised to see her father up as well as her mother. Why are you still up, Dad? We had a visitor a few minutes ago, and she was looking for you. She said you were helping her fiancé cheat on her, and she wasn't going to let you keep doing that. Bob sat down on the arm of the couch. What's going on? Raina took a deep breath. This is all going to sound crazy, but I want you to hear it from Derek. I hope you didn't let her in. April Lynn shook her head. No, in fact, I called the police. Seemed to me she was trying to threaten you, and I wasn't going to put up with that. Okay, good. Did they take her into custody? Bob frowned. She left before they got here. Now what's going on? Derek explained very concisely everything he'd told Raina in the truck. She's crazy, and that's the simple fact of it. I called her parents, and they're coming to get her. I'd like it if you made a rule that she isn't allowed in the spa until they get here, though. Has she been in the spa? Bob asked, his eyes growing wider. I gave her a massage on Monday, and she was there Wednesday, trying to get a love potion from Riley. A love potion? April Lynn shook her head. Doesn't she know what Riley does? Apparently not. Riley and I talked before she saw her, and Riley gave her a jar of water with a rose quartz and an amethyst in it. Raina shrugged. We didn't know what else to do with her. April Lynn laughed. My girls are geniuses. Yes, we probably are. Riley thought about jabbing her with pointy crystals, but I told her not to risk the reputation of the spa with that. Now I wish I'd let her do it. I kind of wish you had, too. Bob frowned at Raina. Why didn't you tell us all of this before? I didn't know, Raina said softly. I knew that she was here, and she told me she and Derek were marrying, and I didn't trust him. I thought she was really here to marry him, so I just avoided him. If I'd had any idea at all what was really going on, I'd have told you guys immediately. Ah, April Lynn shook her head. You should have asked him about it all first instead of believing her. Yes, I should have. Raina sighed. 
and Jacqueline came and talked to us at supper tonight. We went over to Riston. Jacqueline Hardy? Or whatever her new last name is? April Lynn asked, her eyes widening. Did she have a message from the fairies? April Lynn was obviously just as excited as Raina had been about the talk from Jacqueline. She did. Raina laughed softly. I couldn't believe it. It felt like a rite of passage, and Derek just kept looking at me like I'd lost my mind. Well, I can see if he didn't know the history of Jacqueline how he would think that. She is a rather unusual person. Bob grinned at Derek. I hope Raina explained who Jacqueline is. She did, but it still doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, Derek said. He hugged Raina with one arm, wishing he felt comfortable kissing her in front of her parents. I'm going to go. I'd like it if she didn't go anywhere alone until we know that Felicia is gone. Maybe she could ride with one of you to work? And ride home with someone? I can ask Joel for the time off work to drive her around. No need for that, April Lynn said. We work the same hours tomorrow, so I'll make sure I drive her. She won't be alone. Good. Thank you. Thanks for telling us everything, Bob said, looking at Raina. I hate the idea that my daughter is in danger. With as many Quins that live in this valley, all we have to do is send out the alert, and everyone in town will be watching over me. I'm going to be just fine. Raina wasn't even concerned. It may seem crazy to everyone else, but she had always felt very safe in Quinn Valley, and she always would. After Derek left, her parents sat with her for a little longer. I'm going to let your grandparents know what's going on, Bob said. I'm sure they'll spread the word. I hate to have everyone worrying about me, but I think we'll all be safer that way. Felicia has no idea just how many Quins live here. Raina grinned. I'm going to take Daisy outside, and then I'm going to bed. Tomorrow is my early day at work. Her mother stood up. I'll go out with you. You're not going anywhere alone, remember? Not even to the backyard? Raina asked, feeling like her parents were already going overboard. Not even the backyard. Bob stood up. I'm going, too. Yay! I feel like it's my first day of kindergarten and I get to have both parents walk me. I'm just glad you live at home at the moment. I'd make you move back home if I had to. Her dad ignored her sarcasm. Raina sighed. It was going to feel like forever before Felicia left town. On Friday afternoon, they got word that Felicia had checked out of the hotel. Her parents had both come to get her and her mother had driven her car back while she rode with her father. As soon as she was gone, Raina felt as if a huge weight was off her shoulders. She could go about life as usual and not worry about the other girl popping up out of nowhere. She'd even had a few dreams about her, so she was glad it was over. Derek picked her up at six, and they went to the pub where Ivy was singing again. Raina was excited to be there because she wanted to feel like her world was normal again. All evening, different Quins kept popping by their table, telling them they'd heard the threat was over and they were all happy. Derek dropped her off just after midnight, kissing her sweetly. Tomorrow night is game night with Joel and Haley again. Do you think he's gotten any better since we last played? Raina laughed. Not a chance. He's been playing euchre as long as I have and he just hasn't figured it out yet. Sometimes I think he's just a little bit dense when it comes to the game. He's really good at others, just not at euchre. All right. With one more kiss, she slipped into the house, and he drove home. Already he was thinking about buying a ring. She was perfect for him, and he would have to be blind not to see it. Raina went inside and found her mother typing away on the couch. How much do you have left? she asked, sitting down next to her and trying to read her laptop screen. Not much, April Lynn said. I have about three more chapters one think, and I can get those done by the end of the month. Then it's off to an editor, and I'm going to have a finished book. 
The excitement in her mother's voice thrilled Reina. That's awesome, Mom. I'm really excited that you're almost done. Reina called Daisy over and attached her leash. I'm taking Daisy out. I'll be back in a minute or two. Do you want me to go with you? Her mother asked, obviously not wanting to leave her laptop and the words when they were flowing. Nope. She's gone, so there's really nothing to worry about anymore. Besides, she needed just a few minutes alone with her thoughts. Her mind had been racing all week, and she hadn't had even ten minutes anywhere alone. Normally, she at least had some time in the car. When she stepped outside, she talked in a low voice to Daisy, worried about waking the neighbors. Daisy did her business in the grass, and they headed back toward the door. Just before they reached it, Raina stopped short. I see you recognize me, Felicia said, from the bushes. I've been trying to catch you alone for days. I'm alone. What are you going to do now? Threaten me? Raina made sure she raised her voice with the last two words, knowing her mother would hear. You're going for a little walk with me, Felicia said, flashing a gun. Where did you get that thing? Raina asked. You don't want to add kidnapping to everything else, do you? Weren't you supposed to leave with your parents today? Felicia laughed. My parents took me home, and as soon as we got there, I turned around and drove back. What do you think they're going to do? Lock me in my room? Let me just put the dog inside the house, Raina said. She's not been treated well, and she's afraid of people. She was surprised the dog hadn't started crying as soon as she saw the other girl, but she'd been calm. Maybe she was getting better after all. Fine, but just open the door enough for her to get in. You're not going anywhere. The gun was pointed straight at her, and though Raina was nervous, she carefully opened the door for the dog. If nothing else, that would tell her mother that she needed help. Chapter 10 Derek had just gotten home when he received a call from April Lynn Quinn, telling him that Raina was gone. She said she'd already told the police, but she had no idea where she'd disappeared to. I saw which way they went, and I've told the police. He immediately called Felicia's parents, who thought Felicia was in her room. After checking, they told him she was gone again. He groaned. There was no doubt in his mind that Felicia had taken Raina. The only woman he'd ever loved had been kidnapped by a woman who had been obsessed with him for years. He called April Lynn back, telling her what he'd found out. Felicia is missing, and so is Raina. This isn't a coincidence. Call in the cavalry. We're on it. Derek immediately started driving the streets of the small town, trying to find any indication of where the women could have disappeared to. He went back to the Quinn's house, only to find no one home. He'd been told that when Haley's sister had disappeared, they'd used the pub as a base of operations, so he headed there, hoping he was right. He wasn't at all surprised to find every Quinn in town gathered around April Lynn and Bob. Joel ran to him immediately. Any idea where they'd be? None, but I can't imagine that Raina would have left with Felicia without force involved. I'm sure she's got a weapon of some sort. There's no sign of struggle in the snow in front of her house, so Felicia convinced her to leave with her somehow. Joel nodded, turning to the sheriff, a man who was related to the Quins. We think Felicia is armed. That's not surprising, considering the situation, the sheriff responded. Get your family to drive up and down every street in town. Divide it into sectors. It'll be the fastest way to figure out where they are. Joel took charge, dividing the family into pairs, and they all took a car and a small portion of town. If you think you see them, call 911. Get the police in there. We're pretty sure Felicia is armed. As Derek looked around the room, filled with more quins than he wanted to count, he realized that no one there was just crumpled up in tears, sobbing their hearts out. No, this was a strong family, and there was anger on every face. There was no doubt in his mind they'd find their lost member and bring her back safe and sound. 
the thought gave him strength. Riley, Raina's little sister, took Derek by the arm. Come on. You're my search partner. I have a section of town. Let's get to it. Derek nodded, following the woman. I didn't know what to do. He felt like he should be riding to Raina's rescue since he was the one who'd gotten her into this situation to start with, but he didn't know how. I could see it on your face. We'll find her together. Ten minutes later, while Riley was driving, Derek saw a glint of metal where there should be none. Slow down. I think I see something. They could just make out figures beside a building. Derek immediately dialed 911 and then gave the address of where they were. They continued past, but slowly, not wanting to leave Reyna in danger, but not wanting to alert Felicia they were spotted. There was no telling what would happen. In just minutes, the sheriff's car pulled up, and the sheriff, along with one of his deputies, approached the situation with guns drawn. Felicia dropped her gun into the snow, laughing hysterically. It wasn't even loaded. I just needed to scare her. The deputy picked up the gun, and Riley and Derek ran toward Raina, making sure she was all right. Raina stood there, her face white, but she looked fine. Derek grabbed her in his arms, holding her close. You're okay? She didn't hurt you? No, she was babbling about how I had stolen you from her, but she never really tried to hurt me. I did as she said, though. Raina let out a breath and rested her head on his shoulder. Thank you for finding us. Every Quinn in town is out looking for you. Riley held up her phone. Not anymore. Derek looked over at the sheriff. Can I take her to the pub? The family needs to see her. Sheriff nodded. Absolutely. I'll go there to take her statement. Raina got into the back seat of Riley's car for the short drive back to the pub, and Derek had his arm around her leading her into the building as soon as they arrived. I'm so sorry, he said softly. I can't believe I put you in danger that way. You didn't put me in danger. That psychopath did. She really needs help. I think she'll get it this time. There's no way anyone is going to let her back out on the streets after this. Derek led her to a table off to one side of the room, amazed that they'd been there just a short while earlier and it had been filled with dancing. It hadn't been time to close when she went missing, so what had the Quins done? Turned it into a base of operations anyway. People started pouring into the building, everyone stopping at their table and hugging Raina. Even her two pregnant sisters had been in on the search, and she shook her head. You two should have just stayed in bed. Not with our baby sister missing. Roxy said. When April Lynn and Bob walked into the building, the crowd separated, as if planned, so they could make their way to their daughters. Both of them hugged Raina tightly. It's over now, April Lynn said softly. You're all right? Raina nodded, tears flowing now that her mother was hugging her. Yeah, it was scary, but I'm fine. The sheriff got to me in time. Riley and Derek found me. Raina's eyes met Derek's. There was so much she wanted to say to him, but they really couldn't leave until she'd talked to the sheriff and everyone knew she was all right. It was several hours later when they finally were allowed to leave after Raina and Derek had both given statements. Her parents had long since left and gone to bed, as well as most of the family. Derek walked her out to his truck, slowly driving her home. In her driveway, he turned to her in the seat to say what he'd been thinking about all night. I'm so sorry I got you involved in this. Raina shook her head. You didn't get me involved in this. Felicia did. You did absolutely nothing wrong. He frowned. I still feel like I did. I was so happy to hear she was out of town that I believed it. I never should have. Will you forgive me? I keep telling you there's nothing to forgive. If I felt like you did something wrong, I would tell you. Raina had been scared through the experience, but the sheriff had confirmed with her that the gun was never loaded. 
she'd never been in any real danger. Felicia really had just wanted to scare her. Well, she wasn't going to be scared away from him. Are you sure you're not angry? I'm sure. I'm just glad it's all over. It was scary, but I'm safe now. She knew when she got into bed, she would curl up and cry for a while, but not because of sadness or fear. It was her way of letting her emotions out, and that badly needed to happen. Does that mean you'll go out with me again? Raina laughed. I'd be angry if you didn't ask me. He grinned, leaning down and kissing her. All right. Tomorrow night at Joel's. Sounds good. I think I'm going to tell my dad that work just isn't happening tomorrow. I need some sleep, and with as late as it is, I'm not going to get it. I don't think anyone is going to expect you to work tomorrow. With another quick kiss, she went inside. Her mother had waited up for her, which wasn't surprising at all. I'm not planning to work tomorrow, she told her. No one is going to blame you for that. Go to bed. I'm going to write a little more. I can't believe you can write after all the excitement of the night. April Len laughed. I'm not sure I'd call it excitement. Good night, Mom. Good night. Asterisk. After a long night of playing cards with Joel and Haley, Raina was surprised when Derek drove her to the hospital instead of straight home. I wanted to come here, where it all started. Where what all started? What was he talking about? You and me. I met you here when you came to give me a massage. So this is where I wanted to ask you an important question to me. She frowned at him. What's the question? He pulled a ring from his pocket and held it out to her. Raina Quinn, would you marry me? Does this have anything to do with what happened last night? She asked. She wanted to marry him, but not if he was only asking her out of guilt. No. I was planning to ring shop today, and I did. It has nothing to do with you being kidnapped by my psycho ex student. She pursed her lips. So why are you asking, then? Didn't I tell you? I'm asking you to marry me, because I love you with everything inside me, and I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Is that a good enough reason? She grinned, giving him her left hand to slide the ring onto her finger. Then yes, I will marry you, and we will follow Quinn tradition and have five children together. What letter do you want to choose? He looked shell-shocked for a moment. He'd forgotten about the five children thing. Letter? My mom gave us all our names. What letter do you like? He shook his head. Can we think about that for a while and come back to it? I guess. I'll cut you a little slack on the letter, because I love you so much. He cupped her face in his hands, looking deeply into her eyes. You really love me? I wouldn't put up with psycho stalking you across the state otherwise, now would I? He laughed. So when do you want to marry? Do you want a big wedding or something quick? She thought about it for a moment. Both of my sisters have gotten married quickly, but I think I want to do a real wedding. How would you feel about waiting until my brother gets home from the Marines, and we can marry then? I want him to be there. Sounds good to me. We'll drag my family out here, too. And Roxy can help me plan the whole thing. We'll have the reception in the hotel. I'll get her to snag me a spot. She grinned. Thanks for agreeing to wait. I want you to have the wedding you've always dreamed of. It's more the wedding my mom has always dreamed one of her girls would have. She did a quick wedding too. I think she wants to play mother of the bride at least once. As long as it makes you happy as well, I'm all for it. With one more quick kiss, he put the truck into drive and took her to her home. So do we make a big announcement? Or do we just wait for people to notice the ring? She shrugged. I'm not even sure. Why don't we see what happens? She rested her head on his shoulder once he'd put the truck in park in the driveway. I can't believe we're really going to get married. 
I can't believe you ever doubted it.